Hello. Okay. I believe my guest is in the studio. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for uh, coming to my show. I believe uh, we, we. I had to email you again. I guess uh, you were busy somewhere. No, I just had some technical difficulties. Um, the sorry, the Streamyard uh, the application you're using. I, I didn't have the proper right. link, and then when I was able to open it, I was having some issues on some devices. Uh, so so I understand. I'm so delighted to see you here. It's an honor to have you on my show. And let's play the video that my production people have made for you. Oh. So that's my guest for the day. And I would like to tell my viewers that she's not only a dynamic leader, but also one of the most loved personalities of Brampton North Region, Ontario. Elected to be member of parliament twice, she's a people's person, a very compassionate person, and a community builder. Thank you so much, Ruby, for giving us your time today. No, thank you, Ekta. And uh, those uh, images brought a smile to my face, a lot of memories uh, in the last uh, couple of years. So that's also our reason for putting it here. It refreshes yeah. up, you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that was a lot of hard work on your part. I was I really like, love doing oh. such things. Yeah. <laughs> the, the hardest part is that you guys are doing to keep us safe and healthy and in a protected area and you're taking care of our everything, all our needs today. So the hardest part is on your side and the healthcare workers. Well, thank okay. you, Rekha. This is uh, still, we still have a very tough road ahead of us. And as we can see, the second wave is uh, more challenging in different ways. The first wave was uh, very challenging. Maybe our numbers are worse now, but just in terms of policy and uh, uh, figuring out, you know, this new virus, uh, I would say both waves have been equally challenging in different ways. And uh, I'd love to share more information with your audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have to share something. I recently watched our Honorable Prime Minister Justin Trudeau compliment you for your tireless advocacy and efforts for your for our community. So I wanted to ask you, since now like in-person activities can't take place, so how are you continuing to maintain your connection with the people and community? Um, yeah, that was really uh, something that was a big worry of mine. Uh, like you said, I you know, oftentimes people ask me what I want to accomplish as a member of parliament and what I want to accomplish is, of course, um, being able to be a very uh, compassionate, like you said, member of parliament, but a very accessible member of parliament, because I do feel that oftentimes people feel that we are um, somebody that they cannot approach maybe, or it's difficult to approach or difficult to get a hold of us. Uh, and that is something, uh, a perception that uh, I wanted to change. And so when the pandemic started, uh, that was one of my biggest worries is how do we continue to engage with people? How do we continue to, um, even when our doors were forced shut, how do we continue in some way to have our door open so that people can reach out if they're having a problem or they want to be able to speak to us? Um, and it's a challenge I'm having now again, the second phase is uh, because we did open our doors again um, for many months now. And so, we want to make sure people have access. So virtually, as you're doing your show now, we've learned about so many different applications, so many different ways that we can virtually stay in touch with people. We can 
share our message. And I have to say that um, I think although media has had a challenging time during this pandemic as well, they've done a great job at uh, making sure that the messaging, the policies, the information is getting relayed to people, um, whether it's through the television, the radio, or whether it's through YouTube or so many different um, sites that have been created mm -hmm. in social media as well. So I wanna thank you and um, many other also new people that are taking on this role to make sure that we can connect with people and that you can get information to people. So I'm like likely also, I have been throughout this pandemic, obviously relying on the phone more than I used to rely on um, meetings in person, virtual meetings, um, virtual events, even more and more community organizations are doing virtual events. Um, but basically what my staff does is, you know, whether you've emailed me or called me, um, some people still walk in here and there, but less and less are doing that because it's not safe. So if you've emailed or you've called, um, they make a list for me for the day uh, or for the week. And then I just continue to call and connect with everyone who's reached out in some way or another. Uh, and even through social media, we uh, are trying our best to monitor the feeds and, and reply to all the messages that are left. I appreciate this so much. That's what that, that this is one of the reasons why we designed this program so that we could invite our member parliaments and other leaders so that they could share what all they're doing in the community. And also after the leaders leave the show, we call people or organizations who are doing great job. Mm -hmm. Small business houses who are doing small, small things from home. Yeah. like with activities and stuff so that we get them connected to the people and within their home they can make use of things you know others can learn what they're doing and they can get connected so this was one of the reasons we started this program with this aim to build up the network and get the people connected in the community yeah and sometimes uh, you have to um, I know some seniors that have never used technology before and uh, through the help of family or sometimes through a, a phone call, we've been able to walk them through uh, how to connect, how to have this virtual interaction. Nothing is the same as the human touch, but a lot of people are feeling really isolated yeah. right now. And uh, I think with the new restrictions coming on uh, in the second wave, once again, people are feeling a little bit uh, upset, a lot of anxiety that this is happening once again. Uh, and I'd like to say, you know, sometimes when that happens, we um, we revert into our, um, you know, isolated selves. We may get depressed. We may not want to talk to anybody that we have to try to encourage people to try to, you know, adopt these new methods of communication. And once they do, we realize they, you know, it, even if it's 100% not the same, they are quite satisfied and quite happy. I know a lot of grandparents that are able to talk to their grandchildren and share in birthdays. My son just had a birthday um, one week from today and uh, we did it all completely virtually and even the grandparents were able to see him virtually. Very happy birthday. Uh, yeah, thank you. And of course it's not the same, but I mean, through that we were still able to have a celebration uh, of some sort rather than to skip it. So I, uh, I think we need to help each other out and uh, teach each other how to rely and how to use these new technologies. Yeah, I know. The, this moment, we, of course, are very thankful to the technology as well. There were times when we were not happy of our kids being too much on laptops and TVs and computers. But the time has changed so much that we ourselves forcing kids to sit across the laptop or iPad and study. Things have changed so much. I know, uh, and that's another thing we're facing, you know, a closure of schools or, or online schooling for a little bit longer. Um, and it's not uh, perhaps the best in some ways uh, for children, but uh, health and safety has to come first as well. So although it's a provincial decision, I do, um, having a school age child myself, uh, I understand the fears and worries of parents. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's so sweet of you. You explaining things so nicely, and I'm just enjoying our conversation. Uh, another question I wanted to ask you: A lot of people don't qualify to receive Canada Recovery Benefit Fund, including certain percentage of international students also who were quite largely depending on these small petty jobs to take care of everyday, you know, expenses. 
Uh, along with that, a lot of people lost their jobs due to pandemic and now the extended lockdown. So people don't have food on the tables and money in their bank accounts. They're relying uh, largely on these charities and food banks. How is government tackling this issue on hand? Yeah, so our re relief programs didn't only uh, encompass, didn't only include direct relief directly to citizens. Of course, that was a big part of it. You know, over 9 million people relied on the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, which has now uh, become the Canada Recovery Benefit. Yeah. Uh, but we also, you know, we also gave more back to the Canada Food Bank, to the United Way, uh, to uh, the Red Cross. Many organizations that you may not also realize uh, are not maybe perhaps directly giving to your local, lo I mean, they're not directly giving to you, but they are giving to local organizations in the community. Mm -hmm. So we've got a group here, uh, Soch Mental Health, that has been doing some really great work over the last five years. They were able to get a good, uh, a big grant through Red Cross, which was money that we had given out to the Red Cross uh, to provide mental health supports and to uh, go through grant applications and provide the organizations that are doing a good job uh, additional funds because of COVID. Um, similarly, United Way has given out to our different community organizations here that are helping seniors. I know many groups that have uh, are doing handing out meals to seniors uh, are on lists of the region of health. Uh, and so a lot of different groups and organizations have been able to rely on the grants. They have been given by the federal government to do this work for seniors, whether it's delivering groceries or um, virtual events to uh, make sure that uh, loneliness is not growing in our communities and a lot of other things. Food banks has been uh, have been relied on heavily. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to also encourage any of your viewers if you know they feel they are in need um, of some support when it comes to food, please reach out to us. We have um, a list of all of the food banks. Food banks have been reaching out to us to identify people and families in need that they might not be getting to. So let me know, send me an email, give me a call. Um, my number is available on my website and everything. And we can connect you and we can do it in a very discreet way where no one would know um, who you are or your identity. So uh, we don't have to worry about that. I know that there is often a stigma attached and people don't want to ask. And uh, I know um, it's very difficult to ask at, at a time like this. Uh, when it comes to students, we did have a big new announcement uh, that just came out. The Minister of Immigration made another announcement just a few couple of days ago about extending the work permit for students. So we know that um, after your studies, you got a postgraduate work permit. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be one year, it could be three years long. Uh, we're extending that work permit um, in a very simple, streamlined way. Uh, so for more information on that, you can also connect with us. Uh, we want to encourage, of course, students um, during this time were not able to do perhaps the work that they needed to do uh, in order to apply for a Canadian experience class PR. Uh, and uh, because of those gaps that may have occurred because of the job shortages in COVID times, uh, we wanna give them another opportunity, a second opportunity to be able to get that experience that they need to obtain PR. So that's something that's being done for the students. Also, um, the students that were working and were able to show $5,000 of previous income, they did qualify for the SERB benefit and they would still qualify for the Canada Recovery Benefit. Uh, so if they are um, confused as to whether they qualify or not, uh, they can definitely call the CRA number or contact us um, to ask any of those questions and we can let them know. Of course, if they were not working, uh, or I, I hate to say this, or if they were working but not um, documenting or not uh, uh, legally working, then uh, there's no proof that they're able to provide. And I would say then you are not eligible. And of course, the government has to keep some um, guidelines. We tried to make the um, the requirements extremely low. $5,000 of income is generally um, attainable by any working person, uh, even if you are working part-time or in a very uh, minimal job, $5,000 of income is not a, a high requirement. And that's why we kept it so low so that we could catch as many people as possible that may need help at this time.
that's so very well explained it's just too good and i i am so thankful our government is so thoughtful they're considering everybody including those international students as well so now i have a question from the audience this girl reached out to me requesting to ask you a question today can i have anna on my screen hello hello anna. hello hi good morning good morning how anna, are you today okay anna is an international student from iran who recently graduated with a master's degree in construction management and civil engineering so anna what's your question to ruby okay so my question is uh, it's about the vaccine because as an international student i just wanted to know uh, will we be also getting uh, vaccinated and if it's yes uh, it's going to be for free or it's going to be covered by our uh, insurance that's a that's a very good question uh right now i'd hate to give you the wrong answer because this health Uh, deciding on who gets vaccinated uh, there is a federal guideline however there is also uh, the decision is made by the provinces healthcare is also um administered and provided by the provinces and so whether you are covered under any provinces healthcare that is decided by the provinces as well and so i know students have uh while they're in school uh, they're required to have health insurance during this pandemic however there was an exception made for all people in this country so i know in 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 ontario here uh if you walked into a hospital at this time during this pandemic you would be covered with or without insurance uh they are no longer requiring insurance so it is my uh, it is my belief uh that all people will receive the vaccine regardless of uh health insurance or coverage uh since that has been the precedent set so far we've been providing healthcare and health needs um through our local hospitals without it having to even be a covid related issue so even if you're walking in for other issues and you don't have coverage right now the hospital is covering uh the costs and uh it would be my belief then that we would follow a similar pattern and all people uh that are either here working or uh studying uh in any way would uh receive the vaccine now what phase of the vaccine you would receive i i would i would assume you would be in a similar phase to the one that i would be in um where healthcare workers and frontline workers are going first right now uh i'm assuming it's going to be seniors uh in the next round um and then we haven't heard i i think in the third round is where they uh will have uh, vaccination for all uh that don't get captured in the first two rounds and that is most likely where you and i will fall well, thank you so much for um, answering anna are you got the answer yes. now thank uh you. yes yes thank you so much i just wanted to say it was complete information thank you so much for the time and for the invitation here so that i can ask the question thanks Thank no you so problem much. and if you ever you can you know even as a student i just want to say uh no matter what area you live in uh, i think this is useful information to probably all of the viewers is that if you type in uh if you go to google and you type in find uh my mp uh it'll take you to a website uh, the first website that pops up is the house of commons website and you can punch in your postal code and it'll let you know who your mp is Uh okay. so that's a very easy way uh oftentimes people are confused about who their MP is, who they should be contacting for questions or who their MPP is. Um but I do know I am a federal MP. Uh all you have to do is some a simple search like that, put in your postal code and it will give you the responses to who your MP is. Contact us if down the road there is any issue or confusion about this matter as the policies are coming out um because I can't have a complete answer for you right now it hasn't been yet decided um I do have a strong belief that I have tell, told you what it is but um I can give you more accurate information once that information is um once that information is actually public Perfect perfect thank you so much for letting me know Yeah Thank you so much Anna. Have a nice day. My pleasure. You too. Okay. Thank you Ruby for giving such a nice uh, clear information to everybody and I have to share her something with my viewers today. I attended a liberals rally in uh, Mississauga in 2019 and I'm not lying when I say that the MP that received the most cheers 
applause and support from the crowd that was ruby sahota it, i was there and i observed entire auditorium was like ruby ruby and i was like i want to see her someday she's so famous <laughs> um it i I have to say I'm very lucky to have received a lot of love and support from the community um and uh, I do love this position for that reason is is getting to contact getting to meet with getting to engage with different community members different people getting to know so many people in the community it really has been the highlight of uh my this opportunity that people have given me and uh i hope uh if i carry on in this role that uh, i'll be able to meet each and every one uh, that lives in my riding and beyond because uh people are truly uh the ones that give me the energy and motivation to go on that's so sweet of you that's really very nice of you it was wonderful talking to you today ruby thank you so much for again coming and uh, you know explaining everything to the viewers and uh, all the very best to you and uh, just continue doing this great work that you're doing for the community that's really helping us live in a peaceful atmosphere today you are a true community leader i truly believe that's why people call you she's our community leader and thank you so much again we loved having you here i really apologize for setting the timing of your show off because of my technical difficulties um although we are used to that to some degree that's been happening a lot lately uh but i do want to say you know a couple of things to remember is um you know search find my mp put in your postal code try to connect with uh your representatives if you need support or if you have any feedback or comments for them we love hearing from you it helps us better understand what is going through your mind um even if it's positive i know we usually reach out in negative times uh or if there's a problem which is fine uh, of course you have to reach out when you're having a problem or a concern yes. but even if there is just general feedback and it's not even a pro you know it's not your problem but it's an overall community issue or something like that i'd like to encourage uh especially our south asian community for to reach out even in those times as well uh to inform us about legislation or bills and what what your thoughts are on the matter so that we have a good understanding when we go to parliament or when we're talking to the prime minister and uh, our cabinet ministers and also um make sure that uh you check out canada.ca Canada.ca has all of the different COVID um related supports uh that are being provided it has many mental health links as well lots of different information on canada.ca that can help you during this time uh and if you haven't already please download the covid alert app um it is an app that uh you've probably heard the prime minister and many of us be talking uh, talking about i just had a call the other day and someone said their covid alert app has alerted them that they were around somebody that tested positive uh so we know right now our public health is not able to do the tracing that is needed for us to be informed if we've been around somebody that has had uh, a positive diagnosis if you have the app uh it can be very simple if everyone gets the app it becomes even more effective right now you know um there are some issues because not enough people are downloading it so i would just request that you continue to tell your viewers to download the app it's free uh it can only help save lives really in Pri privacy issues and concerns have also um it's been recommended that uh, this app does not um there are no issues when it comes to that our privacy commissioner of canada and many countries around the world have um have have stated uh and many organizations that this is one of the better apps so please download it um it will help to the work of uh tracing and help alert you so um that's the only especially as the numbers are going up um that is my only request uh to all of your viewers uh -huh. i'm going to make an announcement every issue every episode to download this as it yes. has been specially requested from my mp ruby sahota thank you thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much ruby it was wonderful to have you we all very very honored to have you today in our show you have a fantastic weekend and keep safe thank you you too and to all of your viewers as well thank you